There are two forms of nucleic acid, deoxyribose nucleic acid, DNA, and ribose nucleic acid, RNA. We'll focus on DNA in order to understand the complexity of its structure. A DNA monomer is called a nucleotide. It has three parts. The first is one of four nitrogen bases, adenine, A, thymine, T, cytosine, C, and guanine, G. We'll start with cytosine. The second is a deoxyribose sugar, S, joined to the base by a covalent bond. The third is a phosphate group, P, joined to the deoxyribose by a covalent bond. This is a DNA nucleotide. C's and G's bind together, and A's and T's bind together. They connect via hydrogen bonds to form base pairs. These base pairs are bound to other pairs by a covalent bond between the phosphate groups and other deoxyribose sugars. Repeating the process gives us the DNA molecule. This is its structure diagram. Here's a ball and stick view. The bases come in two categories, the pyrimidines with a single ring and the purines with two rings. These bases are used by all living things on Earth. Here we have a random collision of a cytosine molecule with a deoxyribose nucleic acid. In the chemical reaction, the weaker covalent bonds between nitrogen and hydrogen in the cytosine and between carbon and oxygen in the deoxyribose are broken. Stronger covalent bonds are formed between the hydrogen and oxygen atoms forming water and between the nitrogen and the carbon atoms. Next, we have the bonding of the new larger molecule, called a nucleoside, with a phosphate group. Again, old bonds are broken and new bonds are formed. This is a DNA monomer, a nucleotide, a building block of DNA. Now we move in a guanine monomer and join it with the cytosine monomer. Together they form a base pair, held together by hydrogen bonds. This is a full DNA horizontal component. This GC example contains 72 atoms. As we saw earlier, the electron location probability distribution around each atom join to form a complex cloud around DNA monomer base pairs. These base pairs are stacked one on top of another, joined by covalent bonds between their end phosphate and sugar components. But as two base pairs randomly close in on one another, direct alignment creates electron-electron repulsion and Pauli exclusion principle problems that prevent any bonding between the two. But with a rotation of 36 degrees, these conflicts disappear and the bond is completed. Careful measurements found that they are only 0.34 nanometers apart. That's close enough for van der Waals interactions to help hold them together. Building on each other, these complementary base pairs create the full DNA molecule. The 36 degree twist per layer would produce a 360 degree rotation every 10 layers, a helix. A single human DNA molecule contains approximately 3 billion base pairs. That's around 216 billion atoms. There are as few as 20,000 base pairs in a virus DNA. But viruses need a cell in order to reproduce. So the first life could not have been a virus. The simplest single-celled organisms are bacteria. Here's Mycoplasma mycoides. It has 1.08 million base pairs and contains 901 genes. We'll take a closer look at this bacteria to see how it was used to create the simplest possible living cell.